In the workshop, a Stuart 504 boiler part 4, fitting the water gauge and a new gas burner. I'm reusing the water gauge from the Stuart Models HB6 boiler. I felt that this water gauge on the HB6 boiler looked far too small, because the HB6 boiler is 6 inches in diameter, but it seems to be a perfect size for this old Stuart 504 boiler. The first part of the job is fiddly. You have to make sure that you get the fitting to be tight in the correct place, and to do this I'm using different thicknesses of shim washers. You can use copper crushable washers for this job, but do not use silicone o-rings. It is essential that water gauge fittings remain in the same place all the time. If they move at all, they will smash the glass. As you can see from these video clips, it takes quite a while to get the correct combination of washers so that the water gauge fitting is in the correct place once it's tightened. As usual, I'm treating it to some Loctite 542 hydraulic seal so the fitting's never going to leak. It's very important to get this part of the job right. You have to think ahead and think, well, will this be okay when I tighten it up? Will it be in the right place? When the fitting is finger tight, it needs to be somewhere near where it's going to be when it's finally tightened up. It's no good screwing the fitting into the boiler bush at 90 degrees from where it's going to end up, because then when you tighten it up with the spanner, it's likely to shear off. Here's the bottom fitting going in place, same principle. As you can see, it's nearly there, but not quite. This will tighten in place okay, though. Before I fit this permanently into the boiler bush, I do need to fit the blowdown valve. I've given up on the lever taper cock type because they leak. I use a standard 90 degree globe valve that you can get from Blackgates Engineering. This small globe valve has a 3 by 40 thread and it screws into the bottom of the fitting perfectly. Here I'm verifying that the fitting is definitely in the right place and I'm removing it to apply some Loctite 542. Now it's back in position, it's time to try the glass tube. Some people tell me, oh well I use a piece of metal for this. Well, I don't see the point of that. The glass tube is perfectly adequate to check the alignment. This is how I use the cut the glass tube. Normally I use the end of a triangular needle file and then just snap the glass like this. And as I intend to fit silicone o-rings to the glass itself when it's in situ, I generally remove the sharp edges on the one inch belt sander. But I'm told by viewers you can also heat up the glass to melt the end, but I don't see the point in doing this. Just a touch on the belt sander is a lot quicker. I've had a lot of really weird comments lately. Quite a few. A few too many, I think. I don't mind comments from viewers, but please be aware, dear viewer, that if you send me a comment, it does not go into the comments section of my channel. It comes to me first for approval. So if your comment is racist, unpleasant, abusive in any way, then it just goes into the junk box. It never comes onto the channel. So really, you've wasted your time. Some viewers write me small essays in the way of comments. Some comments try and advertise things, and some are even about religion or politics. I never discuss religion or politics. And as I've mentioned before quite a few times, please do not send me links. If your comment, however long or short it is, contains a hyperlink to a website on the internet, it is automatically deleted, because some clickable links can be very bad indeed. Most of the links that people do send me are quite harmless, some are useful, but I don't let them onto the channel, because they can be dangerous to your computer. What I'm doing here is using a tap to clean out the thread in the top part of the water gauge fitting. The top cap was getting to be a bit of a tight fit, so I thought it was a good idea to clean the threads, and once the threads were cleaned out, the top cap fitted perfectly. It doesn't need a washer, it just needed a bit of Loctite 542. Well that's the boiler reassembly more or less complete, I'll just give it a quick polish with a cloth. Phil from Forest Classics sent me the gas burner very quickly, and here is a business card that he put in the package. I recommend Forest Classics, they're very good people to deal with. And here's what I bought, a gas burner, this is a Bix 008 gas burner, and this is a number 16 gas jet. I'm going to make my own gas jet mounting very shortly, but before I do that, I'm measuring the inner dimensions of the base of the boiler. And here I'm cutting a piece of steel that I will machine to fit in the base of the boiler. I'm fastened to this piece of steel, eventually it will be some location points to hold the burner in the correct position. More about this in a future video. For the moment though, it's back to this job, over to the lathe, 
and I have a piece of brass hexagon in the three jaw chuck. First of all I'm facing across the end, then I'm rounding the end like this, followed by a longitudinal cut all the way down. What I'm making is a special holder into which the gas jet will fit, which will also be the part that I can push the silicone rubber tubing onto. I've made these before so I'm not going to labour the point. I often make adapters like these for running my steam engines on compressed air and here I'm just machining some shallow grooves to make it grip the silicone rubber tubing better. And now a very routine but a very important part. First of all using a centre drill followed by a twist drill. I'm drilling a hole down the centre of this fitting with a 1 8 drill frequently pulling it out to clear the chippings. Here I've turned the part round in the chuck to machine the other end. This is the end that's going to take the gas jet and then it's going to be machined to fit into the Venturi pipe on the burner. But first I need to drill a tapping size hole in the end of the brass bar to suit this thread. 1BA. You don't really use 1BA very much, or at least I don't, but 1BA is the thread on a gas jet. I use a 5 30 seconds drill and a taper tap, which is probably a bit small because 2BA uses a 532 threads per inch tapping size drill. The taper tap cut a good thread down into the hole, then I used a plug tap to finish it off. All I need to do now is cut the outside diameter of the piece of brass to fit into the Venturi pipe. Once that was all done, it was time to apply some Loctite 542 and a very small amount of 542 to the gas jet and then screw that into the part that I've just made. Looking at the finished job, maybe you're wondering why did I use brass hexagon? I could have just used a piece of round bar. Well, the answer is simple because I need to tighten the jet into the end of the fitting and I can use a spanner to support the other end on the hexagon. Now it's time to push the fitting into the Venturi, not forgetting to slacken off the bolt first. I adjusted the position of the jet for optimum burn. And here's the burner doing what it's supposed to do. The gas I'm using by the way is butane, not the normal butane propane mix. Everything seems to work and that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.